Hello and welcome to a podcast series by PacesDiaries.UK. This podcast is focused towards catering all the necessary information about MRCP UK and MRCP Ireland Paces examination for those who are preparing for the Paces and also for those who wants to know what MRCP UK Paces is all about. I'm your host, Dr. Sophia Aldrin, and let's welcome Dr. Moses J. Wesley again to our podcast series to discuss yet another topic in neurology. Welcome again, Dr. Moses. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's so exciting to be here for yet another podcast series for MRCP UK Paces Neurology. And today we are going to talk about another interesting topic and a very important topic when it comes to Paces examination itself. Yes, Dr. Absolutely. I've been enjoying thoroughly discussing all the topics in neurology with you and I'm sure our candidates and everyone who is listening to this podcast series are enjoying our conversation as well. So, and they're getting the maximum benefit out of it, I believe. So, as I mentioned in our previous podcast that we will be dealing with nerve palsies and today's topic is median nerve palsy. Absolutely. Yes, doctor. The anatomy and course of a nerve is extremely important if one has to find the pathology. So, please enlighten us about the course of median nerve. Oh, yeah. Median nerve is very, very important. Now. All right. Median nerve, you call it typically as a laborer's nerve, right? So you should know the nerve root C6 to T1 and also contains some fibers of C5. All right. Then you should know what are the motor functions. It innervates your flexor and, you know, your pronator muscles in the anterior compartment of the forearm, except flexor corpi ulnaris and a part of flexor digitorum profundus, which is innervated by ulnar nerve. It also supplies the innervation to your thenar muscles and lateral two lumbricals of the hand. Okay, very important. Then the most important thing is the sensory supply of the median nerve. The median nerve is responsible for cutaneous innervation of the part of the hand. This is in two branches. First is a palmar cutaneous branch. Then other one is a palmar digital cutaneous branch. This palmar cutaneous branch arises in the forearm. It travels through the hand. It innervates the lateral aspect of the palm. All right. This nerve does not pass through carpal tunnel. So the sensation is spared in carpal tunnel syndrome. Once again, I'm repeating for a clarity of the candidates, the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve arises in the forearm. It travels into the hands. All right. It does not passes through the carpal tunnel. So the sensation in the lateral aspect of the palm is spared in carpal tunnel syndrome. Please, please, please remember that. And then again, palmar digital cutaneous branch, it innervates the palmar surface of the fingertips and lateral three and off digits. All right. If you know this much, then if you have a trouble remembering, there is something, a mnemonic called loaf. You know the loaf of bread, like LOAF muscles, which are supplied by the median nerve. They are your lumbricals, one and two. Then your opponent's policies, your abductor policies, brevis, and a flexor policies, brevis. All right. Remember and remember the sensory supply and and remember whatever I told you about the carpal tunnel syndrome. That should be more than enough. Yes, doctor, absolutely right. I am sure most of them do recall remember the mnemonic loaf. So if so some one of you, I mean, someone who doesn't know how to rec- remember or recall this. So please remember the loaf for the muscle supplied by the median nerve. And yes, you will be sorted for uh, going further in this case. So one of the most important and common question that we have come across in paces while dealing with median nerve is carpal tunnel syndrome. Doctor, how to approach a case of carpal tunnel syndrome and what to look for? Oh, it's very important. Carpal tunnel syndrome can come in station two and five. They just give a scenario of somebody's having a tingling and numbness. So somebody's having a tingling and numbness, how to approach and what are the questions to ask and what are the things we need to know about that? That's extremely important. So what things a candidate should know about when it comes to approach to tingling and as well as numbness and to carpal tunnel syndrome? Just ask a proper history. If you are in station two and five, you can just get to know what exactly is the cause of carpal tunnel syndrome. Of course, idiopathy causes that, but there should be something else. Could be a diabetes or a myelidosis, acromegaly, something will be there. Okay, so if you want to approach that, you should know how to approach a case of a median of palsy like look for any deformity like an apthem deformity any clawing any wasting thinner eminence wasting is a late sign all right even in the long-standing carpal tunnel syndrome sometimes only a part of the thinner eminence 
wasting can be seen. All right. So ask them to do a prayer sign, reverse prayer sign. Tinal sign do only with examiner's permission. Don't get over enthusiastic and start tapping. It can be painful. And if you elicit a pain during an examination, it is a red flag in MRCP UK paces. All right. Then weakness of the thumb abduction should be tested. That's one of the very important tests for median of involvement. If you test this and approach this way and with the proper history taking, you will be absolutely fine. Agree, doctor. Yes, dear candidates, please remember everything that has been discussed right now. Each and every point is very important. What not to do and what is the main red flag that you're not supposed to do in a case of carpal tunnel syndrome. Never elicit a tunnel sign unless and until you take permission from the examiner. So please remember this. So as we just discussed, carpal tunnel syndrome is one of the very important topic. And it's a must to know the list of causes of carpal tunnel syndrome. Doctor, what are the causes of carpal tunnel syndrome? Yep, the list can be really huge and tiring. I'll just tell a couple of things. Acromegaly, rheumatoid arthritis, trauma, hypothyroidism, amyloidosis, gout, chronic renal failure, diabetes mellitus, Paget's disease, and the list is huge. At least remember these things, especially concerning to station two and five. That should be fair enough. And even Cushing's, you know, yeah. All right, doctor. There comes another nerve while dealing with median nerve, which is anterior interosseous nerve. What is AIN palsy or anterior interosseous nerve palsy? How to approach and what are the signs we expect in a patient with AIN palsy? All right. The AIN palsy has a triad of findings. All right. First, why it occurs? It can be occurred due to the entrapment by the fibrous band between deep head of the pronate arteries and flexor digitorum superficialis. This anterior inter interosseous nerve can get entrapped there. So how do you know it is? There will be triad of symptoms. First thing, the weakness. Weakness of flexor policy as long as there is thumb and first flexor digitorum profundum, profundus, that is your index finger. There will be weakness of these two muscles. Next, pinch sign. Okay. It's positive when performing a pinch between your thumb and index finger. All right, the distal interphalangeal joint will fail to flex. If you're trying to do a pinch, you can try it yourself. The DIP will fail to flex. That's second component of the triad. The third component of the triad is a straight thumb sign. On grasping an object, like, you know, the IP joint of the thumb failed to flex. On when you're trying to grasp anything, the interphalangeal joint of your thumb will fail to flex. So if you find this triad of three things, the weakness, the pin sign, and the straight thumb sign, then you know that you are dealing with an AIN palsy. All right, doctor. Thank you for this approach on AIN palsy. Let's move on to one more interesting subtopic, and that is pronator terrace syndrome. Doctor, what is this pronator syndrome? What are the, all the things that a candidate should study and remember in this topic? Oh, yeah. The pronator terrace syndrome is simple. Like, you know, median nerve can get compressed in some sites, like elbow, you know, the anterior interosseous nerve compression, just I said, like carpal tunnel, even pronator terrace. Okay, what happens? Like... The median nerve, when it passes through two heads of pronator teres, just distal to the elbow, just distal to the elbow, it passes through two heads of pronator teres. All right. What happens? If there is a compression at that level, there will be pain in the volar surface of the forearm following sustained pronation of the forearm. If you keep on pronating the forearm, the sustained pronation, there will be pain in the volar surface. This is due to compression of the median nerve between the two heads of pronate arteries just distal to the elbow. Okay. Thank you so much, doctor, for this information. I think uh, if they know the amount of information that you just provided to all of us, it will be more than enough to ace this uh, case if they encounter this case in their examination. So, um, yes, we have come to the end of today's discussion on median nerve palsy, and I hope all our candidates are getting maximum benefit by listening to our podcast series. Thank you, Dr. Moses, for joining us today and taking us through this very important but also confusing and difficult topic to understand. Which yes, is, yes exactly. 
Absolutely, absolutely. There is one more thing I just wanted to add up here just before I wind up the session. That is carpal tunnel syndrome. Just a little bit of gist on that, okay? And you know the etiology is rise to pressure and you should know what is the normal pressure of a carpal tunnel syndrome. It's around 2 millimeter of, two millimeter of mercury. When it is around 20 millimeter of mercury, the pressure increases, there will be compromise of epineural blood flow. At 30, there will be impairment of axonal nerve conduction. At 40, both sensory and motor symptoms will be evident. At more than 50, it can cause epineural edema. So if they ask you what are the investigations you're going to do, like I said, you check for nerve conduction study, all right? Check for median motor and sensory latencies and conduction velocities. If the sensory latency is greater than 3.5, millisecond or motor latency more than 4.5 it's considered abnormal all right then you can talk about electromyography typically the key muscle used to evaluate once the examiner has asked its abductor pollicis brevis that's the key muscle we need to evaluate the findings will be there will be positive sharp waves and fibrillation which indicates reason reason muscle denervation all right then <clears throat> one more thing if they ask you what do you do to treat carpal tunnel syndrome all right first wrist analgesia then you can talk about a wrist splint then surgical release corticosteroids these are the treatment you can give this is something i just wanted to add up before i wind up the session all right thank you okay, thank you about that so we covered almost everything about carpal tunnel syndrome while dealing with median nerve palsy as well so now the discussion is complete and we have almost um, discussed about everything uh, related to median nerve and carpal tunnel syndrome and also anterior interosseous nerve and pronator syndrome as well. So we have covered almost everything. So uh, thank you, doctor, for taking us through all this uh, information and discussing a lot of information today. It was uh, one interesting topic, but also a difficult one. So thank you for making it simplified and guiding all our candidates in this topic. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here. We'll meet again with yet another topic for MRCP UK PACES. Thank you so much. Yes, doctor. We'll meet you all soon with another, with another no palsy in our next session. Until then, keep studying, practicing all the cases, keep revising because revision is the key. So you all can now listen to all our podcast series at PACESDiaries.UK and on YouTube. See you all again in next session. Till then, bye and take care. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.